Hello, um, welcome to another webcast from uh, myself, Bruce Transfield at Zycon Color Services. And um, we're going to have a quick discussion on Delta E today. So we're going to follow the same format we've done in the before. We're going to put some foundation knowledge down, some practical knowledge, and then applying this uh, knowledge with Zycon software. So, colour. It's very, very complicated and as far as the physical world is concerned we only have the electromagnetic uh, spectrum or radiation and part of uh, that uh, is, is the visible colour spectrum so it's a very complicated thing to try to engage with but what we are as humans uh, we are very good at making what we call models of very complicated um, concepts and ideas and for colour we use a model called LAB. Now LAB is a human construction as I say the, the physicality or the natural uh, colour is, is simple uh, radiation but we have a, a way of communicating colour uh, um, using LAB. So we need to understand what LAB is before we can understand what delta E is. <clears throat> so LAB, the L, A and B, actually stand for a, each is a position in three dimensional space. So we model colour into a three dimensional space. You can see here that the L stands for the axis of light to dark a is an axis going from green to red and blue is an axis sorry b is an axis going from blue to yellow and this is where our lab information comes from so every color can be described with a unique set of coordinates and that's the first thing we need to understand and delta E is a measurement within that colour space between two points. Now, I'm not going to try to pronounce this word properly, but the E stands for Empfundung, and I'm sorry to my German listeners, but basically means sensation, and the delta means a difference. So, first of all, we need to understand what LAB is, and once we have that idea, we can start to think about delta E. So, that is our foundation. Let's move on to the three practical applications of delta E. We have difference between two colours. We can use it to describe a surrounding area around a colour which we would use for setting a tolerance. And we can use also this measurement to see the relative distance of a colour um, compared to a gamut. So we have difference, tolerance and possibility. So let's now look at how we can apply these um, concepts with Zycon software. So difference. First of all you need a target or an aim. Now you can predefine your aim or, uh, or it can be set by, uh, by somebody else. And then we have our result and when we measure the difference between those two colours this is um, a delta E of difference and we can use Zycon um, Colour Forecaster Pro to, to do this for us in a very simple easy click of a mouse um, way. Next we have tolerance. <clears throat> so this is often used when we want to check um, print production or stability of production. Um, again, you have a set of aims. Now you can uh, 
choose your own or use predefined ones and then you apply some rules around those aims what is acceptable in terms of drift etc and uh, when we look at uh, institutes like Fogra when we, we find that we have Fogra 39 for example and also we have Grackle um, which are predefined tolerances or you can set your own tolerances and aims so we have an aim we have a tolerance and over over time we can measure and take um, a note of how our system is performing to do this we usually use control strips and here we see two industry standard control strips these are very very good for checking uh, general CMYK printing conditions however with Zycon uh, color key we can generate on the fly a control strip which just contains the colors in that print job and that's a great way of tracking then uh, brand color reproduction so <clears throat> We can use Icon software option color key <clears throat> to measure on the fly and supply us with reports. Or we can use Icon color control uh, cloud software where we do the measurements offline and that data is stored in the cloud. So let's look at possibility now. So we're aware that some colors aren't possible in a digital system and in webcast 3 we investigated why we need to make a good output profile to ensure that you're printing in the best possible way and also we looked at the idea of the gamut now a gamut is the possibilities of a printing system And when we use Delta E as possibility, we are asking a simple question. Is the colour possible in gamut, therefore the Delta E is zero? Or is it outside of the gamut, i.e. it's not possible? And this is very, very valuable information if you're in production. So just to get this concept uh, across, we have a colour in gamut and we have a colour outside gamut so what you see here is a uh, the edge of the gamut or the skin of a gamut and then we have our color and the delta is how far away is it from possibility so the aim um, is our what we desire however the what we can print is the nearest thing in the gamut so we can use again Colour Forecaster to uh, help us with this and we see here the um, Delta E and remember this is not what to, to expect when you're printing but how far away you are from possibility. <coughs> so we can use Colour Forecaster to help us uh, with this uh, knowledge. And if something is outside of gamut, we can use the candy shop idea to choose best possible colour. We also, when using Zycon Colour Control, we create what we call a prediction report where the delta E's are pre-calculated on every Pantone. So thanks for listening and we'll return shortly with another uh, colour uh, podcast webcast okay thank you and happy printing